A bullet strewn sign welcoming people to Mogadishu 20 years ago seems to say it all. To enter the Somalian capital was to enter a chaotic landscape that had been plagued by turf wars and extreme poverty. Disturbing street scenes like this from October 1993 show Somalis gathering around the charred remains of a U.S. Black Hawk helicopter that had been shot down. In other scenes, the bodies of U.S. servicemen were seen being dragged through the streets, and eerie photos from that time were released of others being held captive. This was the Battle of Mogadishu, also known as the Black Hawk Down episode. It was one of the most notorious and ill-fated fights in recent U.S. history. The U.S. military presence started as an effort to provide security for food relief missions to a famine-struck Somali populace. But gradually the U.S. started trying to target a local warlord named Muhammad Farah Adid, and the humanitarian intervention suddenly morphed into a fierce street battle against militant clans. After Somali militants shot down two U.S. Black Hawk helicopters, efforts to rescue crew members would leave hundreds of Somalis and 18 U.S. servicemen dead, with dozens more wounded. Now, 20 years after the horrific battle, the U.S. footprint in Africa has ranged, from non-intervention in the Rwandan genocide during the Clinton administration to President Obama's enforcement of a no-fly zone in Libya. In some ways, U.S. military engagement in Africa is expanding. Everything from drone bases to training missions are part of the footprint. And that's because the northern part of the continent is seeing no shortage of conflict, from roving gunmen in Mali to the extremist group Al-Shabaab operating out of Somalia. But while these engagements represent a ramp up of sorts, the strong U.S. reluctance to put boots on the ground to counter these threats is still influenced by the battles in Somalia 20 years ago. For The Wall Street Journal, this is Mark Scheffler in New York.